Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition to The Point Podcast. Hope you guys are all doing well on this beautiful Tuesday. Technically, this is episode 100 of To The Point. Um, it's This is episode 100. Uh, we're going to have a special episode as I put on Facebook and Instagram and other platforms today. I'm going to be interviewing Doug McLean on Thursday. So it's a special 100 week here at To The Point. Um, when I started in November, I never thought I'd get to 100, let alone do like 10. So this is it's a pretty cool and exciting uh, week for me. I'm, I'm happy. And, you know, the guy, you know, my co-host tonight has been with me since day one and I approached him about doing this and he, he welcomed it with open arms. And as you all know, he's only getting better and better as he goes along. So Shay, uh, how you doing? And, and I like your, uh, like your sweater. Thank you. Yes. Just got this today. Uh, shout out Elsie. It's a, uh... It's quite the thing that Sawyer has has done for uh, for the community and more importantly for for youth hockey. So, thought I'd give a shout out and it's, it's actually not a bad sweater. So, good job, Sawyer. Um, but no, uh, no, it's good. Today's going great, doing well. Uh, to your comments, yeah, it was pretty rough probably in the beginning, uh, a little choppy probably. But I hope I've, I hope I've gotten better. Uh, both of us have gotten better since. So, no, I'd say it's all good. And congratulations on such a big land for. For week uh, week 100 uh, everyone i speak for everyone and say really really happy for you and you know this has probably probably been a dream of yours for a long time and to see it grown so far is uh, is is an excellent matter so congratulations oh thank you buddy um yeah i mean doug mcclain's a guy i look up to for a long time and to get him to interview him and uh got some questions lined up still working on it but i'm going to try to make it fun and entertaining for everybody so People, you're looking for something to do uh, Thursday at four o'clock, come on Facebook. I'll, it'll be on the podcast proper later. So you can listen to it uh, like PVR. If you're not there, you can listen to it later. So it'll be available all the time. But yeah, really looking forward to talking to Doug and you know everything he's done in the game. So that should be a lot of fun. Tonight, we're going to be talking some NBA. Uh, we're going to talk about succession. Then I get going and I say, oh, HBO, and they're so greedy and they want me to, they want to make us pay extra money. And I said, let's, let's just figure this out this week. Let's pivot for a week and we'll let's talk some NBA because it's a lot's happening in the, in the NBA world right now. A lot of injuries, some teams, it's really hard to figure out who's a contender and who's not. But I thought we'd start off tonight, Shay, talking about Saturday night. I watched the whole game. I was flipping between that and the Jets Oilers. But one of the, I think the best game so far this year in the NBA between the Celtics, your Celtics and the Golden State Warriors where Jason Tatum and Steph Curry went back and forth the whole night and your Celtics ultimately prevailed with a, with a massive victory, but a um, huge showcase for both players and uh, definitely a statement game for Jason Tatum. Yes, I was out and about, so I obviously couldn't get to watch the full game. I did watch the 10 minute highlight video on YouTube and you're, you're right, like it, it felt like just a toss between the two. And we'll get to Stephen Curry after, but he's playing out of his mind, uh, basically by himself on that team. So, you know, kudos to him. He's He's been a player all season long. But, yeah, no, unbelievable game. And, you know, was it just the shootout or what, what made it such a great game for in, in your eyes, Chuck? Um, No team could get ahead by a lot. You know, in the NBA, a 10-point deficit can be erased so quickly now with, with the three. You have to thank Steph Curry for that. Yeah. But, you know, Curry would hit a three. Then Tatum would take the ball and he, he he likes to shoot the long two, but they get the two. And then, like you said, if Curry's not scoring, Golden State, they really don't have a second option. Yeah. <laughs> Came on the passer. There's no Kelly Oubre Saturday night. Obviously, Clay's out. Kevin Durant's in Brooklyn. He's not playing there either. But, uh, you know, they like, I think Damon, Damian Lee was their second leading scorer and he was off the bench. So, it, yeah, yeah, Phil Kessel, it's not good, eh? <laughs> um, so it, it was just back, it came and it came down to the last couple minutes. And another reason is there was no, uh, no timeouts. It mm. was a free flowing game. Not choppy yet. Yeah. You know, those last five minutes at NBA game can be so cringeworthy because you just see timeout after timeout. This Tatum hit a three with about uh, 54 seconds left. That was really the dagger. And, but it, it, it was alive the whole game because Curry came back down the floor and hit a three. So it was like, okay, is this maybe not over? So yeah, it was just a back and forth affair where both guys really were confident, not afraid to shoot the shot. Yeah. And one thing about Curry too is, you know, some people say like, you know, is he not getting defended enough? Is he not getting defended well enough? It's really not the case. It's just him being able to create that space 
and find that shot every time. He, like contested or not, he's he's gonna make it. Like that's how consistent he is every time he shoots that. And uh, yeah, he's just just a dangerous player overall. Yeah, did you see that shot he made with his left hand? No, I did not. What was that? Uh, incredible. He he had a man on him. The guy fouled him, but he had the ball in his left hand. So obviously he shoots with his right. So he was just inside the three point line. And he fired up with his left hand, and he goes in with an and one. And oh my god. It, I, he's just, I mean, there's literally not many guys you can say, okay, if a guy pulls up from half court, if he shoots it, that's a bad shot. Curry, Curry's not going to bitch at him because he could, he can knock that down with ease. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Um, regarding, you know, last night your Celtics lost to the, lost to the Bulls. They, yeah. They've been hot, like winning eight to nine, then they lose to the Bulls who are desperate. Um, this, uh, Golden State beats the uh, 76ers, but they were without Ben Simmons and Tobias Harris. Your Celtics, they've been up and down, mostly down this year, but they still have a nucleus of a team that has gone to the playoffs, has had some success. Yeah. How do you view their playoff chances uh, right now as, as, the, as their team sits right now? Well, and this is, you know, this is going to be a jab at Danny, Danny Ainge with no major center and no, you know, I love Robert Williams. I think, I think he could potentially be a number one big man at some point throughout his career. Mm -hmm. He's not ready. He's not ready for that role yet. He's, you know, he's, he's a good player and I see a lot of talent in him. I think he said to us to develop more of a, a more consistent shot, both inside and outside the three point line. Um, but with no big man, their, their shot is fairly, fairly slim. Like even picking up Evan Fournier, who I think has been, just okay for them. I, I, I'm not entirely sold on him yet. Uh, I, I still don't see it. Like adding another slashing guard doesn't, didn't seem to be more of a solution. It just seemed to be kind of adding something you didn't really need in, in, in my mind. And you brought it up before, you know, if they could have went out and got an Andre Drummond, a, a major rebounder, a guy who could, mm. you know, grab 13, 14 boards a night. I think that would have been great because a lot of times they lose these games and it, it's been all year with them. Re, they're getting out rebounded every time. And it's and like well, we all know like that it's a recipe for disaster if you can't grab, you know, rebounds in your own end and your your opponent gets offensive rebounds. It's it, it's just that's just not good. But it, on top of that, though, I think that they still have a chance to go deep in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I think that with Tatum and Brown there, there's always, you know, you say that core nucleus, you've got Marcus Smart there. You have. Kemba Walker, when he plays well, he seems the team seems to do overall does better. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's a you know there's a few other guys I mentioned. One guy I wanted to bring up for you, Jabari Parker. Is he? Do you think that was a necessary add? Do you think it was okay? Just where they lack on that big man side. Do you think yeah. that's going to make a difference? He he is long. Like um, he actually played well Saturday. I think he had 15 points Saturday night, and I I think it was you know it's uh low risk, high reward, uh, because yeah. if he stinks, well, whatever, you know, he's cost you no money. He's a guy that's just waiting for an opportunity. So, you know, he's going to come in and give it his all. And yeah. he's a guy that was regarded as a real, as a prospect that was going to be a huge player in the league, but you know, he tore, tore his Achilles, then blew his ACL. But like you said, they, they got, I like Robert Williams too. I think he's, he's kind of like a Chris Boucher without the three point yeah. shot. He's obviously bigger. But he, he brings a lot of energy off the bench. I didn't get why they got rid of Tice if they don't add a center. Like, I, I get they traded him, but yeah. why why lose another big man? Because Tristan will play, obviously, but you're not going to play Taco. Um, so, but I think Jabari is could be a good add. You could put him – there might be a situation where you might have to play him at the five. I mean, we see a lot of small ball, and in the east – Brooklyn, when DeAndre Jordan's not on the floor, they, they basically smaller. play small. Uh, yeah. 76ers, they're the only team that really doesn't because they have Dwight and Joel. Mm -hmm. um, you got Milwaukee. They're a smallish team already because Brooke Lopez is not your traditional center. Mm -hmm. So I think they can match up well with these teams. And I guess the only other guy is Clint Capella, uh, who is having a ter terrific season under the rate. I mean, at 20, 25 and 24 on Sunday incredible yeah. performance for him but I don't I don't mind the Jabari ad. I think he like I said he could be a, a diamond in the rough for them if, if everything goes well 
Yeah, and to be honest, it's when we went back to their season, it's just kind of been this injury-ridden season where mm-hmm. Tampa's been in and out. You know, Tatum had the spell with co- the COVID uh, protocols. Um, there's not Marcus Smart didn't play a lot at the beginning of the year. So I don't rid them. You know, obviously you can't – because all teams deal with injuries, right? But it, it does seem like it's been one of these years where they just kind of caught this injury bug slash COVID bug. And, you know, I, I do think that that's kind of affected them. Now, they have won – before they lost yesterday, they, they did win six of straight, which was – yeah which was good, which was something they needed, I think, as a confidence booster, just kind of rolling into this last, I don't know, 12, maybe 15 games that they need to make it to the playoffs. But I, th- I think they have no trouble getting to the playoffs. I think it's just how far they're going to get is kind of going to be interesting because of who they're going to match up with. Right. Yeah, for them, they obviously want to get – I don't. they're not going to catch Milwaukee. No. So get that four or five seed uh, because you don't want to play Milwaukee – uh, Brooklyn or Philly in the first round. And that's yeah. obvious, but you take your chances with Atlanta. I think Atlanta is an up and coming team and the, they're dangerous. You know, I think they're going to be really good in a couple of years here if they dropped a few more good players. Potentially, free agents want to go back to Atlanta now because Atlanta is a, in the NBA, it is a destination city. Uh, right. Because of, you know, ask Lou Williams. I mean, he loves it. Uh, you know, Lemon <laughs> Pepper Lou. Uh, but they got Trey Young, who, He's fun. He, uh, like I said, Capella's oh. there. Houston gave up on him, and he. I think he's just telling them to F off every time he grabs a rebound. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. Productive. They got John Collins, Kevin Herter. You know, got to love your white uh, redhead three-point shooters. Yeah. Um, so, got to love him. They, Firecracker. And Bogdanovich is a good player. Like they, good ad, yep. They're, they're – they're a little scary. I think, I think Boston Atlanta would be a fun series. I'd love to watch that one because mm-hmm. as you know, in the, in the NBA first round, I think the NHL, the first round is always, always the most entertaining. It's the complete opposite in the NBA because it's normally yeah, a lot you know, of sweeps. Clear cut and sweeps, but yeah. this year might be different because the East is wide open. Yeah. Even some matches up in the West are, are like close, mm-hmm. like the first six teams. Yeah. They're, you know, they maybe have gotten away, but I don't like, those last, you know, and with this plan, Chuggy, it could be a lot different because right. a team that maybe deserves to be in there that could got the seventh or eighth seed might just get booted out because just because, right? Right. Um, so yeah, no, I think it's I think it's going to be interesting. I do anticipate like a very very good couple first round matchups, um, but obviously that's still that's still a ways away before we can determine you know who we think is going to be those matchups. Right. Yeah. No. Still a lot of ball to be played, like you said. Um, the opposite is we mentioned Steph Curry. Uh, the guy 11 straight 30 point games after 49 last night against the 76ers. The, the guy, I, I said this last week, he's one of the most influential people in the history of the game. And he might be the most influential player in the history of the game shape because we watched NCAA we watched March madness. How many kids are jacking threes? Like, I think we, if we watch AAU, kids are just shooting threes like Steph Curry because you can't be Shaq. You can't be um, Yao Ming. You can't be seven feet tall and just, you know, be that jacked and kill people. Yeah. But maybe if you're a little guard, I mean, Steph's 6'2", six, 6'1", six, like he's not a big guy, 170 pounds. You could be Steph Curry if you got a shot. And, mm-hmm. yeah, you got to work on your handle. He's obviously unbelievable. <laughs> But I think some people, they can picture themselves in Steph Curry more than they can, you know, with Kevin Durant or, like I said, Shaq Sha- and other big name players. Yeah, exactly. I think the name recognition around the world now, that's that's what you really think of when you think of Steph and Curry. Like, like he, uh, that those run where he, they were in the, they were in the finals five years in a row. I'd say he was probably just as big as maybe even Jordan when he was in his prime in those, in those 90 series. So you think about that, I think about him, you know, basically saving this Golden State franchise. Like, think about the new arena, Juggy. Think about all, you know, everything that's happened since he's been there. Yeah, the, only, the, the only major – the only major players I can think of is run TMC, which was uh, Richmond, uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., and Chris Mullen. That's right. the only thing I think of but beyond the Steph Curry area of the Golden State Warriors. So, I, I think he's done that, which, you know, who knows, maybe they relocate if they, if they didn't find success. Um, but yeah, un- unbelievable player. 
Um, and I think you're right when it comes back to how he's influenced the game. I think of often like how you see more and more big man jack up threes and that you rewrite that that's in the NCA too. Um, but that never really happened until about 2015, 2014. Before that, you saw more traditional Dwight Howard centers, grab boards, you know, work in the paint, Al Horford, same thing. After that is really when it started to expand. And, you know, you saw guys like Brooke Lopez start to shoot threes. Um, uh, Jokic, as long as he's been in the league, he's probably been shooting yeah, threes. Even like um, Valanciunas, like we always joke yeah. that he couldn't shoot a three. And then it became, you know, summer threes. Him and Amir Johnson started shooting threes for the Raptors. So it, it, yeah. they, they pivoted. Like they, they changed, like you said, with, with Curry and the change, changing landscape of the game. Yeah, no, it's, um, no, yeah, and exactly, it's fantastic, summer, yeah, summer threes, yeah, that's, you right, I can't, I can't even imagine how many times me and you said summer threes to each other, but yeah, and, and we laughed about it, we laughed about it then, but, you know, now it's a, that's a staple, and it seems like if you want to be a legit center now in the league, you have to have some kind of shooting game beyond the arc, like you see Joel Embiid, he'll jack him up once in a while, yeah. I hated seeing him, but Daniel Tice, you know, he's not a great example, but every time he took a three, I cringe because I was like, you're not going to make this like, but everyone's pushing to do it because they know how effective it is in the game and they know how much it means to their team to, to grab that extra point. Right. And now in the NBA, if you, sh if you shoot a mid range shot and you're not Kevin Durant, I think your coach hates you silently because Maybe. I mean, Houston Rockets philosophy forever under Daryl Morey was, shoot threes and layups. And that's all you can, that's all you can do because you're not shooting a mid range shot ever. Like James Harden can shoot the three. He can drive PJ Tucker was going to shoot corner threes. Um, you know, Russell Westbrook was going to drive, shoot the three poorly whenever he had it, but it, that was their philosophy and it got them so far. Didn't ultimately win it for them, but the mid range shot is slowly leaving the game for better or for worse. And a lot of that has to do with Steph Curry because when does he ever shoot a mid-range shot? He, I, you could count probably the mid-range shots he's shot in his career because if he sees that he's um, inside the three-point line, he'll take that extra half step back just to get the extra point. Of course, three three is going to be two every time. Yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, and it's still, I mean, as of now, the mid-range is still, you know, it's still there, and, and there's guys who do it very well, like Kevin Durant, like you said. I often think of Kevin Garnett, actually, when yeah. I think of a mid-range, too, because he was – he was just so tall and so good at them. He would just do it over smaller defenders. Yeah, even like my guy Dirk. I mean, that was his. That was exactly. his team. I mean, that was, yeah. that was fade his away three, fade away too. Yeah, exactly. And you know, and this is crazy to think about, but if there was a Clay Thompson or Draymond more regularly in the lineup, where do you think Golden State lands in this? In this, you know, this race in the Western Conference because they like Clay Thompson. That's an extra 20, 30 points every night you're getting. Really. Yeah. yeah especially with all the injuries in the West, um, you know, the Lakers missing AD and LeBron. We got Jamal Murray out for the season. Damian Lillard's out right now for the, uh, for the trailblazers. Nurkic has missed almost the whole season. I, I think they're top three for sure. Like, cause yeah. play Draymond and Steph, I think it would have came into the season with a lot with a chip on their shoulder and you know people saying they're done or they're they're wrote off and i mean they're they're just winners those three guys yeah. that's what they've done their whole career right so i i think they would have came out men possessed and I, I think they at least finished top four in the western conference yeah yeah and i i, I agree with that assumption drink uh, i'm not a, if anyone knows me i'm not a big dream on fans i don't i don't like him just not not more media stuff because I I does think he does a, a lot for sticking up for other players around the league, but just the way he plays, he's kind of a not dirtier player, but he's a more aggressive. He's, uh, he's like a rat, kind of a little bit. He's the NBA's you know rat, so the NBA's yeah. Brad Marchand. If anyone needs a comparison, and he's a great player, I'm not even going to dig him that because he can do it all. He passes rebounds and scores if he needs to, but I just don't like him. I and the. Mm -hmm. The yell, the yelling, and all that—it's just—it's just too much for me. I've just never been a fan. But Golden State, they got with, and you think about their team now. Like if they were to keep Kelly Oubre, maybe a bench guy coming off the bench, doing a little bit of scoring. Wiggins, you know, he doesn't have to be a star, but he can produce and you know back kind of be that three like under Clay and Steph. And then you got Wiseman, and he's the biggest factor for me. 
if Wiseman can do what he did in college at the NBA level, I think that's a competitive team and then like a contending team, actually. Sorry. Yeah, I, no, I agree. I, the biggest thing for Clay is it's going to be basically two years that he hasn't played. Mm, I hope tough. he can come back because I, I have such an appreciation for him because he's just, he does it the right way. He comes from a basketball family. I, I can't say a bad word about him because he's just, he's about, I think he just loves basketball. So mm. I, I think nobody will work harder than him to come back. But yeah, Wiseman's such an X factor because he's had an up and down year. He's out for the season now with an injury. But I, for him, I just think he needs to simplify it. Master the, your mid-range game before you go to the three-point line. And I think he was kind of too worried about shooting the three when you're not that great in the paint yet. Like dip, dip your foot in before you go, you know, jump in head first. Yeah, because he's a, I mean, he's like, he's, he's a young player, right? He's 19, 20 years old. He has all the time to to add that three-point game to his shot. So, yeah, you're right. Develop your develop your inside game and your mid-range and then work from work from going on, on there. Yeah, but they're, like I said, they're ninth in the West right now. So, they're in the play-in spot. They're, them in San Antonio, I believe, are 9-10. And um, New Orleans is on the outside looking in. They, uh they're an interesting team. I, I, we didn't have them written down for to cover them, but they should be better. You, on they paper, are. they should, yeah. yeah. They should really be better. Uh, Zion, I think he's having a fantastic season. I think I think he's a lot of fun to watch. He's improved a ton for me. Just, uh, I think, with his fitness and his just playing the game. Brandon Ingram is a great player. Lonzo Ball, when he wants to, he's a really good player. Yeah. You know, Eric Bledsoe, take him or leave me. He was productive on Milwaukee for years. Josh mm-hmm. Hart off the bench is, is a scrappy uh, pit bull. I, I kind of define him that way. Yeah, Steve but Adams. Steven Adams, who just grabs boards. You know what he's going to give you. Uh, did it yeah. in OKC for 10 years. Yeah. But th- for them to be three points out of 10, three games out of 10, that's such a disappointing result for them. And I, I, yeah. I don't think they'll make the playoffs. Yeah, I had, a, I had a, personally, I had higher expectations for them looking looking into the beginning of the season, you know, think about Zion having a full season. Ingram, when he did last year, was amazing. But yeah, no, I, I it must be, I, I'm thinking it must be defense for them, like just structural yeah. defense because they have so many offensive tools. I just don't think it can be that. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're bottom three in defensive efficiency. And uh, funny enough, they hire Stan Van Gundy, who's a defensive-minded coach. And they sign into a five-year deal and their third worst in defense. Like you said, they have every offensive weapon you'd want. I mean, you got bench, you got players on rookie contracts. You got some, they had really some really good options. It, it looks, I mean, they got Stan for another four years. So you're not going to fire him after one, but you got to figure out defensively, you got to get players to buy in. And clearly he hasn't done that yet. Yeah, it could be a time thing too, where it's it's going to take a, a year or two just to kind of adjust to his system and the way he likes to play, um, and to get everybody on board. Because sometimes, you know, we've seen it like when you got half the team that's on board, well, it doesn't work because you got those one or two guys that are still lacking and don't know their spots um, defensively, and and and, it break, and they break down, and that's how they get scored on. Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens with, with New Orleans because I think they'll be competitive for a number of years, but to miss the playoffs another year when you know John Morant was picked second that draft for Memphis will likely make the playoffs mm. again tough look on uh, New Orleans for sure yeah. uh, no you had something to add no 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 I'm ready to get to the pretenders and contenders yeah I thought this would be fun so we're gonna go over our contenders and pretenders for the ultimate championship right now for the eastern and western conference um you know you could add you got to five teams, three teams um, in each category. Uh, it was an open-ended question. So I'll start with you. Who are the contenders in the Eastern Conference for you? Contenders. So I did, so I did six, uh, no particular order in what they were, you know, what they were saying, but uh, just guys I thought were, and conten- uh, contenders, you said? Yeah. Contenders, I have the Nets, Heat, and 76ers. So, you know, everyone's going to be like, oh, you picked the top two teams. Well, yeah, I beg the top two teams because they deserve to be there. You know, I can see Brooklyn or I can see uh, Philadelphia being in the being in the NBA championship. Yeah. Why? Because one, Philadelphia, 
it doesn't even seem like Ben's. I mean, Ben Simmons is effective. Don't get me wrong. Everyone's he's making a big show of becoming the defensive player of the year, but and beats just played and played and played so well this season. Yeah, that I I could see him just going hot in the playoffs and you know just just going on a tear. We mentioned in a previous podcast Seth Curry, what he's done for that team, how big a factor mm-hmm. he's been. Other guys, um, so why is Shake Milton had a great year? Yeah, yeah, he has. And you know what? You know, probably Philadelphia probably didn't like the contract he was given when he got there. But guess what? He's done. He's worth. He's proven that he's worth every single one of those dollars that he's made. Shake Milton's another guy. He's just kind of a backup guard, but I really like his game as well. So yeah, they just got some effective players, and I, I just enjoy their enjoy their game. I, I watched a lot of the Philly and uh, Celtics games this year, and they've all been fairly good game so far. Yeah. I also had Nets Sixers and I I was going to include Milwaukee and or Miami. I didn't because oh. I, I only went with the two because Milwaukee you know they're they're a broken record. Um yeah. Every same year thing. it's the same thing. They look good in the regular oh. season, you know, they got Giannis yeah. and they they added Drew Holiday and they're set, they're firing all cylinders, and then they get to play a tough opponent and they bow out. Uh, it happens yeah. every year. You build a oh, wall, yeah. Giannis can't break through it. They don't have enough players that are good enough to overcome it. They lose. So I don't see that changing, especially going up against Embiid. If you're potentially going to play Embiid, uh, if the Sixers finish first, which I think they will, they'll likely play the Nets in the second round. Even if all those three guys are playing, you're not beating them. But four to seven, if they're all healthy. Giannis could score 50 every night. They're, they'll be like Jordan playing uh, the Celtics in the 80s. You're still going to lose. Uh, so I I don't like – in the heat, I want to – you know, they made it to the finals last year. and Maybe they, they get to the playoffs and they have that playoff pedigree hero and, you know, be my hero and Duncan Robinson and, and Bam and even Dragic. But they've been so inconsistent this season. Yeah. And Shaky story. They need to get that six seed or higher because if they play the Nets or Sixers in the first round, oh yeah, they're they're, they're done. Be on the course pretty quick. Yeah. The only reason I have them as a contender is on the fact that they they will probably play a little better. It seems like they are on the rise as of late. Mm-hmm. Um, that you think about their bad start they had this year, you were like, God, like this is a team that just went to the finals could probably end up missing the playoffs. Yeah. But it, you know, it seems like they've, they've got a little, like, I don't know, a, a little bite now to their game. You know, I like Jimmy Butler's game recently. He's, he seemed to step it up. Um, but like those, the, all those guys, you mentioned it, Bam Adebayo is just incredible. He's an incredible center, to be honest. Like mm-hmm. he, he's going to be one. I think he's got more to his game too. I think he's going to be one of these elite, elite centers that we've seen. These Jokic, these Embiid's. Um, and yeah, and he's, He's, I think he's going to be right up there. I think he just needs a little bit more time. But, yeah, so that's that's the reason I have them as a contender, and just because they, you know, everyone's like, oh, well, they're probably tired from doing it all last year. Well, you know, I, I can still see it. I can still see them going there. They got so many weapons and so many different angles on how they can play. But, yeah, you're right. If they if they face uh, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and KD in the first round, they're, they're, they're as good as gone. Yeah, uh, but, you know, they beat the, the Nets at a buzzer beater on Sunday. They won. You know, they've been winning lately. But they, they have all the trappings of a good playoff team because they can shoot threes, they play good defensively, and they have a really good coach. So that that obviously is in their favor. And, yeah, I, I like I like your first two. How about the pretenders in the Eastern Conference that are really not a threat to win the title? Well, you begged one of them, and that is that is Milwaukee. I don't have to say too much on that, but yeah, it's a it's it is a broken record every year. Well, great regular season, gone is going to win another MVP, but then you know a couple rounds in, oh well, you're toast. Especially last year, we're losing to Miami after this this you know gone has had this big season and you know won the MVP mm-hmm. and he was Defensive Player of the Year, and then just to go out to that like that, like I was like, well, well that that just feels like it's for nothing, like. I think they, to prove themselves, they've got to make an NBA Finals, at least, at least to make an NBA Finals. And you're right, like, Giannis, it's, it seems like in the playoffs sometimes it's just him out there. And you need Chris Middleton. You need, God forbid, you need Brooke Lopez to step up, which I don't think he can, but you still need him there. I watched through, I watched that game last night with Milwaukee and um, 
Phoenix. Oh, Sun, Seattle. Yeah. And that, it was a very close game. I didn't watch the second half, but I watched pretty much all of the first half. Very close. Drew Holiday looked like a player. I know we, you know, we mentioned him earlier. I, I, I don't know. They just need to figure it out, and they got to get it right in the playoffs. And maybe they have to upset one of these bigger teams. They got to upset a Brooklyn. They got to upset uh, a Miami or a Philadelphia to do it. By the pretenders, I have. Oh, and this and this going to hurt me to say. My I Celtics. know. Yeah, yeah. That's number my one. Celtics. <laughs> And you don't have to, we don't have to, you know, we're not going to scream it like we said before, but no, no, no major big man in there is not going to win. It's not going to do you. You get against an Embiid. I've seen it all year long. Embiid's just eating them up, going down, bumping down Tice, mm-hmm. you know, little, little hook, little jump shot. He's dangerous. He's, he's the man. Celtics don't have anyone to stop him. Tatum can play all he wants. He can put up 40, you know, 45 points like he did on Saturday. It's not going to matter if if you if no. you can't defend that guy. Um, and lastly, before I throw it over to you, last pretender, uh, Atlanta Hawks, great team, great year. I called it. I said they were going to make the playoffs. Yeah, I did. Joe, Mason, Joe Mason. I said that he didn't believe me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. No, and then they, they they went out and proved everyone wrong. Good for them for making the playoffs, but it, it, lack of experience on as, as their team as a whole is not going to do them well. Yeah, like you, I thought I didn't think they'd be as high as they are. Uh, I thought they'd be the eighth seed. You know, I thought getting Rondo would help the team. Ultimately, they trade him. Uh, he was a non-factor in Atlanta. Um, likely play a bigger one in LA. But yeah, we mentioned the players earlier. Trey Young, terrible defensive player, but uh, electric on the offensive end. And yeah. John Collins and Herder, like we said, yeah, I, I agree with you. They're not there yet. Experience, a couple more years, maybe they make a push. Celtics, I agree with you. Uh, they they can make it interesting if they play the Sixers or the Nets. I don't think it's a sweep or a five game series, but they don't have the firepower to get by them, and they're just they'll lack, like you said, the center position. And also, I just think the bench of you know the Seventy Sixers have a really good bench, and that's mm-hmm. something that you know they can bring to the table uh, against the Nets or Celtics that I think gives them an advantage. And yeah, Milwaukee, Milwaukee. Uh, they hopefully they prove us wrong because I think Giannis is a good guy and um, you know, he's won back to back MVPs. And I think if he hadn't won back to back MVPs, I think he'd be leading the MVP debate this year. Mm, a good year. But uh, they'll, he'll, they'll, he'll never win it. He'll probably never not even be nominated because that would be too, that would be just too boring for, for writers. But um, yeah, I think, like I said, net 76ers potentially Miami if they can make it interesting. But, yeah, we're basically on the same page uh, when it comes to the Eastern Conference. Okay. Okay. How about I like that. contenders in the West? This is more interesting to me because I think there's a multitude of teams and there's a lot of teams that could be on, a lot of teams that could be off here. So, yeah. contenders I have, in the West. I, I, have, um, I have three. Again, uh, Jazz being one of them, obviously, they're the top team. They're a contender to me because if they can stay playing at the same pace they've been playing all season, and I doubt they will. I think they'll drop off for some reason if they play a tougher opponent. Mm-hmm. But they've just played so well defensively and so well on the boards. If they could do that in the playoffs, I, I think it would work for them, and I think they can nab their way to a playoff spot. Or, sorry, playoff spot, to an NBA final spot. Um, other contenders, I have – oof. Actually, looking at my lineup now, and you, you said a couple players that were hurt. I knew Murray was out for the season. I had the Nuggets still, but uh, after thinking about it, that's probably not reasonable to ask. So, they, in fact, the only other contender I have is the Lakers, and that's on the hopes that KD, uh, AD and LA get back, or uh, LJ get back. So, we'll, we'll see. What, what about you? Yeah, I also have the Jazz. I do have the Lakers, and it, it's so weird because you got the Nets and the Lakers, who are both projected to go to the finals. And nobody's healthy on these teams. LeBron and Anthony Davis haven't played for three weeks. You gotta, they gotta get back for the playoffs. At least get a few games in, and maybe win a couple, so you don't gotta play Denver in the first well, round. That yeah. would be tough. They have to, even without Murray, Jokic. Still okay, yeah. Here is Denver still a good team. Uh, they beat the Clippers last year. Porter and, and you got um, Aaron Gordon there. So I wouldn't want to play them in the first round. You want Dallas or. Memphis, whoever wins that play in, uh, in a perfect world, even Portland. I'd rather play Portland than uh, play, play Denver. 
Right. Um, I do have the Clippers and it, I'm really hesitant about the Clippers because yeah, you got playoff P uh, who's gave himself that own. If you give yourself a nickname, you're a loser. In my opinion, you got to earn that nickname. Right. Um, and you know, you give yourself a name playoff P and then you just gag away every playoffs you're in. So that's tough, but they do have the, um, the human cyborg in Kawhi Leonard. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, and you know, he's a two time NBA champion, two time finals MVP. I think he wants to win that third finals MVP with a third different team, like LeBron. Yeah. He'll never say that, but I think he wants it, you know, just to say, Hey, LeBron, you're not the only one that did this, buddy. You did it for one year. Um, and you know, your boy, Marcus Morris, senior, um, and was playing on, great ball this is on the senior, uh, playing great ball. Yeah. Uh, for them, big zoo. Uh, they, they got, they got Rondo, you know, he was great for the Lakers. I think he can be an impactful player come playoff time. So yeah. I think they have more options this year than they did last year. So I'll give them a slight edge and it's not in a bubble. So clearly they, they all said they hated the bubble. So maybe they're not in a bubble. So they'll be more prepared come playoff time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what I did when I was thinking about if the Clippers were going to be a pretender or contender, I basically took the 2019 Raptors team and I took the team they have this year. I took out Paul George because he's basically useless. And I said, okay, well, you know, what team is better? And if, you know, the, if the team they have now is better than the, that team, right. then I, well, I'll pick them as a contender, but I, I just couldn't see it. I'd take that team, oh, the, the 2019 Raptors over the 2021 Clippers. And yeah. But you're right. They have more pieces this year. You know, they took on Patrick Patterson, who's a, who's a decent guy. He can give you, you know, a few minutes a night as a backup role. Um, but, yeah, I, I really hope they do make a splash. Losing in game seven last year to the Nuggets was obviously disappointing because everyone wanted to see that L.A. versus L.A. matchup in the conference final. So I hope that returns to fold. Um, and, you know, it works out that both of those teams can maybe make it in some perfect world, like you said. Um, but, yeah, and Paul, Paul George, just, you know, pandemic P. Well, like what, what, what are you thinking? Like before yeah. you even step foot on the, on the floor, you gotta you get a couple games in, see how you're feeling, then maybe come up with a nickname, then, then right. it's valid. But yeah, even though when a series or, you know, don't get swept by LeBron in the conference finals. Uh, yeah, yeah you know, in, exactly. In Indiana. Uh, yeah. How about pretenders though? This, this will be more interesting. Right. So, so a couple of my pretenders, I already mentioned the Nuggets and Clippers. Yeah. Um, the Suns I have as pretenders and people are going to be like, oh, but why? Well, it's the same reason as Atlanta. They're a good team. Chris Paul's really the only guy on that team that's got a ton of explanations. You could say Jay Crowder because he went to, he was with Miami last year in their run. He, he's got the experience. But other than that, this is a, is a fairly young team um with some great talent Devin Brooker's a, a hell of a player I love he to is, watch him play he is electric I saw him just carve my Celtics this year like one by one it felt, felt like but yeah it's just that with the lack of uh, experience I think that they will get folded by somebody like an LA team like even the Utah Jazz I would love I don't know about you how, how fun would that be a Utah Jazz versus Suns team and I know what you're thinking like Jazz all defense but I think just just that matchup of Broker and Mitchell would be exciting. No, I'm all for that. Uh, you know, I as you know, I don't root for anybody. That would be fun, like, to have a – everybody wants Lakers Clippers, which, you know me, I'm a contrarian. So to get something opposite of that and to make everybody else mad, that excites me. Yeah. Um, so everybody would hate Jazz Suns. I can yeah. – and I just think of listening to Dan Patrick show and they would hate that series. And I, I just sit there and be like, this is great. Like just Rudy Gobert just mucking it up and blocking shots. And, but I, I agree with you on Phoenix and, and the nuggets uh, nuggets, I think would be a contender, but Jamal Murray, they can't overcome that. This yeah, it's such a loss, really terrible news. And like, you, need, you need that point guard. You need, you yeah. need a floor general Phoenix. I think Chris Paul can still play at a high level. So I think they will get back next year. But you, like you mentioned, Devin Booker has never played in the playoffs. DeAndre Ayton has never played in the playoffs. Yeah. Mikhail Bridges has never played in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, Dario Saric and uh, Crowder, as you mentioned, have some experience, but they're reserves. They're not, yeah. you win in the playoffs, it's because your best players get you there. And exactly. I think they need to take a punch or two. 
hopefully they can win a round. If they can get to the second round with this team this year, maybe you'll lose to the Lakers. That's good experience. You come back the next year locked and loaded, and you'll be more prepared to yeah. really contend for a title. Oh, it's a it's a bonus for their franchise just to make to the playoffs after thinking about how the drought. You know, they haven't been a they haven't been a good team since Steve Nash walked yeah. away. So, yeah. you know, for them this is this is excellent. And to keep Broker there, I think, you know, that this was needed. And Absolutely. you know, that all stems that all stems from getting Chris Paul, right? I think you'll agree with that, like getting that uh, leadership. Yeah. Seeing what he did with OKC last year, that's you know, that this is you know, they probably took a look at that scenario and said well, if there's one guy who could come in here and create a better culture and create a, probably a winning environment, it's probably that guy right there. Yeah, I mean, he was available. You knew OKC was going to tank. Gilgis Alexander learned a ton from Chris Paul. Gilgis Alexander looks like a really good player. Booker was already a really good player, but I think he's better now because he doesn't have to pass and score all the time. He's got another guy to be an option. So c- credit to, to Chris Paul for – for doing what he's doing uh, on, on a consistent basis. Um, but yeah, that I also had Portland just because Portland's always, yeah, they're always there, but they're never there. If you know, I was, I mean. yeah, I was wishy washy because of the injury bug they had this year. They didn't have a great year last year. They kind of just snuck, snuck into the playoffs. But then I look back two years ago, well, they made the conference final, they lost to a, a loaded Golden State team, obviously. Um, but and the, and the nucleus of that team, McCollum. Lillard and Nurkic are if they're all there and healthy well they could be effective but ultimately they you know they just they just can't seem to be that and that's healthy so yeah if, if they can't then they're 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 gonna lose because you need those guys on a night in night out basis yeah I think they sit sixth right now so that it would be I think they uh, season ended today they play the Clippers which would mm-hmm. be interesting yeah. uh Lakers Nuggets would be another series which 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 would be interesting if obviously if LeBron or AD was not 100 percent but yeah is the NBA is still top heavy but I think this year it's a little bit more wide open because of injuries because of it being a condensed season and playing a lot of games in a short period of time if a team's healthy coming into the playoffs and playing well they might be able to ride that momentum into a potential championship where the Lakers on the start of the season are clear cut favorite maybe they don't win it because they've been banged up and they just don't have the reps to uh compete with with the jazz who have been mostly healthy all year yeah exactly yeah yeah hopefully spider can come back um healthy sooner rather than later because he's a like you've mentioned he's a so much fun to watch uh donovan mitchell the way he plays nba they're you're filled with younger players you know one and done in college they're always coming in and I thought we'd go through our top three players under 23 and the specific is 23 is kind of a cutoff age where you've played a number of years. You can get three, 23, you can play three, four years in the NBA because especially in a couple of years when one and done's over, you can be 18 and play in the NBA. So 23 is kind of like where you're, you're growing up. You've at least played two to three seasons. And so I thought we'd go through our list and we'll each go with a three, then twos, then one. So who, who do you have at number three for top NBA players under the age of 23? Well, I think anybody who knows me says I was going to put this guy on my list. He's not my first, obviously, but he is. He'll, he'll make the third. He'll make the cut. And that's Jason Tatum. Mm-hmm. And the reason I got him on this list, he's athletic as hell. I, you, know, you can see that when he was coming out of Duke, he was just going to be a, he's just going to be a menace. Um, but yeah, athletically gifted, he's gotten better every single year he's been in the league. I don't think no one can deny that. And now it seems like his basketball IQ is getting up to where it needs to be to be on that star. I won't say superstar yet because I don't want to jinx it. But star status of you know being able to create for others and create plays around him. Um, and that all comes from having great players around him, which Jason Brown is. Jason. Jalen Brown is. Jalen Brown, you know, helped. I think he's getting up there too as for a dominant player, but, you know, Tatum is clearly the number one star in my opinion on the team. And, you know, he's getting every opportunity to lead and to be a leader moving forward. And it's crazy to think, but like he's, this is his fourth year in the league, but he's, you know, he's 23. So I think that says a lot, like, like, like you said, like it's, it's insane to think that he has that much experience and more importantly, he's playoff experience. You know, he's never been in the league and missed the playoffs, which I, I think, you know, may not be because of him totally those years, but 
uh, at least the last couple, he's he's been a menace, and you know he's just got better and better. I have people text me all the time and say, I didn't last year in the playoffs when they were playing the Raptors. Well, I didn't know how good Tatum was. Oh, I didn't realize how good of a three point shot he has. Mm -hmm. So I just hope he keeps getting better. And, you know, if he can be that 30 point guy night in, night out, then that's, that's great. That's what I need from him. Yeah. He's a phenomenal player. Uh, I, he's real close to being a superstar in my yeah, opinion. And I didn't put him on my list because I knew you would. Uh, so I was just like, I'll be different, but if I'm being honest, he'd be on it for sure. He'd be high up because he's just, like you said, I think he's real close to being a superstar at LeBron and others have commented playing against him, just the respect they have for him. And obviously he's a, a guy who trained with Kobe Bryant. So train with him, if Kobe doesn't just work with scrubs. Uh, he clearly saw something in Jason Tatum. He named his son Deuce, which is a questionable name for me, but I'll, I'll let him get, get a pass on that one because it sounds like it has a negative connotation from jump. But, you know, we'll give him a pass on Deuce. Uh, but cute kid. Um, three for me. Three for me. I have um, I have Zion. And I, I put Zion in because – mostly because he's a lot of fun to watch for me. Uh, defensively, he's terrible. Uh, just just – Flat at all. He's a little, he's a little slow. He's a little slow, a little beefy, but in the post, he can't be stopped. Uh, they, they double him. They try to switch, and he's, okay, like, I'll just chew you up. You know, it doesn't matter who it is. I watched a lot of that game Sunday afternoon between the Knicks and uh, Pelicans. Him and Julius Randle were going at it. That'd and, be a good matchup, yeah. Yeah, and honestly – Yes, he was first overall, but if he can turn out to be as good as Julius Randle is right now, I think that's a really good career. Uh, he's never going to have a great shot, I, I don't think. I think he'll be okay. He's actually not a bad free throw shooter for the build that he has. I mean, it could obviously improve. Um, but he's averaging 24 points a game this year. He needs to improve his rebounding. It should be better than it is, uh, in my opinion, just the, the way he attacks. But I have him three just – because I think he's improved, like you said, year over year. And I think this year, especially, yes, the team hasn't had great success, but it's not all because I think he's a big reason why they've had the success that they've had. Yeah. No. And, and to your, like, to, I was just about to say, he's my second pick. So we were yeah. both on the same page with that, basically. Love the way he plays, love how, you know, he's just so aggressive. You know, the one thing I always think about Zion, I'm like, well, with that body type and the way he plays, injuries are just going to be something that you can see foreshadowing his career. Yeah. Whether that's, you know, I, I always, I never, never want to see that. You always want to see guys compete and play, but I, I just always think about that when I think about him. But the fact that no one's talking about how well he's, you know, what a great season he's had because mm -hmm. New Orleans obviously is like we said earlier, not they're struggling. Let's be honest. Yeah. And he's a part of the defensive struggle there as well. I'm not, not going to let that slide. But, you know, when he plays Chuggy, he reminds me of these big body boys we used to see in the 90s. Carl Malone, David Robinson, these thicker. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Chuck, Shaq, like these guys who are built big. Well, that's how he's playing. He's using that side and it's obviously working for him. He's just been, he's just been a menace down low. And if he can develop like a, a pretty consistent shot, mm -hmm. I, I think he'd be, I think he'd be an effective player. And I mean, he already is averaging, like you said, 20, 25 points. Get that, get that shot, and let's see, let's see how it goes. But obviously, I think he's got to work on defense first and put yes. the team first. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, the team's only gonna have success if the players buy in. He's got to do that defensively. But yep. his offensive game has really improved year over year, and I think I think he can develop. A th his three point shot's never gonna look pretty, mm -hmm. but we've seen Lonzo Ball really improve his three point shot, and it looked like oh, yeah. he was grabbing something off the top shelf when he came into the league. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now he's he's a competent three. Like you can't leave him open because he's no, gonna yeah. get down. So yeah, defenders respect him for sure. Yeah. So we bought you had him at two. I had two. I have Trey Young, and okay. uh, this is a list. All my players on this list are just terrible defensively, and that goes against my mo. <laughs> um, but Trey Young, um, terrible defensive liability. Uh, almost right up there with JJ Redick when it comes to the defensive liability, mm -hmm. but. And he turns the ball over a lot, which is a negative, but he can shoot from anywhere. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. he's, you mentioned Steph Curry having an impact on the game. 
Trey Young was playing at Oklahoma and they only made it one round that year in the uh, national championship, but I think he had 50 some points in the game and he'll shoot from anywhere. He's averaging over 25, 9.5 assists a game. He, he see most nights he gets close to a triple double. And, you know, that's kind of Russell Westbrook has ruined that statistic, but for a guard to get close to 10 rebounds a game and the way he's built, that's impressive to me. Again, the guy looks like he's about 170 pounds. He doesn't, He's not like, no, Russell he doesn't look or he's got two heads for shoulders. Uh, you know, it, it's, yeah. so he's a lot of fun. I think he's a really underrated passer because he's no, no more for his shooting, but he can distribute him and Clint Capello at the pick and roll have been really effective. And he's gotten to Atlanta to the four seed in the East. That's no small feat, you know, after a year where they didn't make the playoffs. So uh, kudos to him. Yeah. You think about how scary he is if he does become a better defender. And I mean, that, that could just take some time. Uh, or he may never be that that elite defender um, that you know that he that he needs to be obviously for that team. But yeah, you're right. I mean, his playmaking ability, the fact that he's just a, he can just shoot, he can get around guys easily. He's so small, he's quick. Yeah. He just in and out. Like he just he just finds his way to like slither his way into the paint. And then you're right. It's like a it's a bounce pass to John Collins. It's a lob to Clint Capella, and. Yeah, he, that team's exciting because of where they could be in a couple of years. Um, and the fact that they're having such a great year this year just speaks volumes to that, I think. But yeah, he's he's left off my list. But, uh, you know, when I was thinking, basically when I was picking my third guy between him and Tatum, I'm like, well, one guy plays for my favorite team. The other right. guy plays for a team that always gets my favorite team. So right. it's like, yeah, I got I to gotta pick that one. Number one, do we have the same guy? We, we can say it at the same time if you want, but I think everyone knows who we're going to say. If, if you watch basketball, you know that this guy is more than likely going to be not one on everybody's list. You got yeah. Mr. Luka Doncic. Luka the Magician Doncic. Yeah, yeah as do I. Yeah, I <laughs> um, it's, you go on. Okay, well, yeah. I mean, if anyone hasn't heard of this guy yet, he was traded and what could be the, I would say the worst trade, not because of what the return is, but could, what, have, what they could have got. Right. I mean, he's, this guy's a franchise player. He came in electric. I have it written down here. His numbers versus what LeBron's numbers were coming into the league. Pretty darn impressive. Like you put those two guys side by side and it's crazy what he's done in such a short span. He's, he's only in his third season, but he's averaging like what Juggy, like 28, 28 29 point points. Six points a game. Yeah. Yeah. And this is his third. Like he shoots well. He's, you know, he's clutch. We've seen how many times you've seen that you come in clutch in the uh, late stages of a game. Yeah. Um, passing. He's a great passer. He's done, you know, he's been awesome. And really that Dallas team is not like stacked or anything. Like it's him, Borzingas, and maybe Tim Hardaway Jr. Those are the only three guys I could just name off the top of my head, but they're in a playoff spot right now. And, you know, they probably will make the playoffs. Yeah, I find it weird how the media has been killing them. I look at the Mavericks roster, I'm like, it's not that great. I mean, you got yeah. Willie – I love Willie Cauley-Stein, but mm, your he's boy. on the roster. Like, he's he's trash. I mean, I love him, but he's, he's still good. <laughs> um, you got, like you said, Tim Hardaway, a good story. He looked like his career was over when the Knicks bought yes. him. He, he's found it. But Jalen Brunson, he's a pick from Villanova. He's never really gotten going. Um, but you mentioned – he got traded for Trey Young on draft night. I think we were watching that draft together, if I remember Maybe. correctly. And it was so strange because they both made their picks. They both seem happy. Then they swapped them, you know, a minute later. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? Because mm. they could have just took and they could have taken Doncic, right? And it was, it was peculiar for sure. But Doncic looks, you know, Dallas knows how to get their Europeans. They had, yeah, clearly. They had Dirk Nowitzki my guy for, you know, generations, um, you know, finals MVP. I won't go through his, his resume. It's pretty, it's pretty decorated, but um, yeah, Doncic is fun to watch. He's a, an elite player. Again, defensively he could definitely improve um, like <laughs> Trey Young and Zion, but um, he, he's the engine of the Dallas Mavericks and they're going to go as far as he can take them. Yeah, I mean, you just hope that this guy has the the career that uh, that Dirk has had to your to your point, and can get them back to that you know that championship fold. Um, and I think you know I have no doubt that he will because he's just that good. I mean, sometimes he looks a little puffy. I will say that, but yeah. 
yeah, uh, that's just about doing what you can to get yourself back into shape. And I think he has no problem. I mean, looking at his resume already, he's a Euro League MVP. He's a Euro League uh, Finals MVP and Euro League Rookie of the Year. The guy was the guy was made to play basketball. So yeah, I, that, when that trade happened, you were like, oh, this is just this is not good. But credit to Atlanta, they still got a great guard. So yeah, it wasn't like they traded for you know uh, Anthony Bennett. Uh, and they, yeah. to, they did get yeah, a guy Antoine who looks Walker. like he's going to be there yeah, for a long time. Yeah, Antoine <laughs> Walker. Um, so we mentioned we've gone through a lot, of, a lot of touch on a lot of different teams, but I thought we'd pick one team each that is, could okay. be a surprise playoff team that maybe could make some noise, maybe will cause a little stir. Could be from the East or West. I didn't you know, want to put any uh, shackles on you. I think we'll both have different teams, but who did you, who's your team? Who's your surprise playoff team to look out for? Yeah. And we, we talked about them already. And I think it's because of what they did last year, but I, I have Miami again. Right. And that's just because they're, they're, I mean, it's like we said that they can play the three, they rebound, they, they play well defensively. Let's just be honest. And I just love their team. I just, you know, they got, I think, in the starting lineup the other night, they had two geezers. It was Ikudala and someone they picked up at the deadline. Oh, that's going to bother me. But anyway, it's just, just two, two older guys. And I'm like, that's that's interesting, like, you know, out of all their team, that they they go get this experience. Because obviously, this experience paid off for them last year. Ikudala, right. you know, maybe he wasn't a centerfold when it came to that team. But he was he was productive somewhat productive. in the playoffs. Yep. So, you know, you have those guys on your team. And I think with that kind of build, I think it's just made to do an upset. You know, yeah, we talked about them, you know, probably not doing well against a, a Nets team or a Philly team, let's be honest. But anybody else was, they can take them. Oh, yeah. And if there was any team in the Eastern Conference to do it, it would be them. Let's just be honest. Yeah. So, so that's, yeah, that's, that's mine. Like they, Bam, like I already spoke about him, pick up an old depot, great guard. You know, if, you know, if he has a great attitude, I feel like he's a great player. So when he's on a contender, he's probably happy. Yeah. He's definitely a player that plays better when he's on a contender. I think in Houston, exactly. it was kind of like playing in Buffalo for a while in the NHL. So it's a dark <laughs> it's a fair, you yeah. know, losing 21 in a row, however many, like it was, it was dark there in Houston for a while. I also have a team from the East and I don't think this team's going to go on a deep run, but I think they could do something. And it's so against my nature to pick a big market team, but this team has um, been a big market and they've been a, a doormat for about uh, 30 years. Uh, you know, they've been, haven't been relevant since Michael Wilbon once at Patrick Ewing. Um, oh. I've got the New York Knicks okay. as my surprise. They just have something about them. I, Julius Randall is an infectious guy because it's hard not to like him. He's always got a big smile on his face. He looks like he's always having fun. I like that in a player. Derrick Rose, he's still really productive. I mean, I thought his career was over. Off the bench, he can play. They got that quickly kid. He can. He's a good little player. Reggie Bullock, again, they have a bunch of guys that are kind of cast offs, but they remind me of the Florida Panthers in hockey where you look at the roster and say, how the hell is this team winning? But mm -hmm. they just do it. Uh, R.J. Barrett has improved a lot. I think he's having a good year as a pro. He's finally got some good players around him, uh, which helps. Even Nerlens Noel, I think this might be his fifth team, but he's playing some minutes for the Knicks. Mm -hmm. Do I think they'll win a championship? No. They could probably go out in the first round. But if they're the sixth, fifth seed, who knows? You know, if, if um, they could make some Milwaukee against the Knicks, I think that's an int intriguing series potentially. Yeah. No, I – I don't, and I love that they brought it up because it's probably the one, one of the only teams that we never brought up uh, in the podcast yet. But yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, like Alec Burks, you know, he's, he's a, you know, a, probably an eight or nine year pro, but he's got a good game there and he seems to fit well with, with uh, that cast of characters, like you said. But yeah, Julius Randall, can't say enough about this guy. He is, uh, he's a walking triple double now. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know where he just flipped the wrists. I don't know if it's eating better, training better, but he just has had a phenomenal season and looked like a, to be honest, he's looked like a superstar. Um, but yeah, no, uh, that, that's a good pick. And you know what? They would match up okay against a, 
Milwaukee, I think. And you're yeah. probably thinking, oh, how? Like, you know, like all this. Well, you know what? If it's just Giannis out there, well, who knows? Maybe maybe an R.J. Barrett and Randall uh, combination go off and they just kind of they find a way to beat them. Right. And you, you let Randall take Giannis and you take your chances. You know, you got – you say Barrett yeah. quickly – could you guys score 30 tonight combined? Maybe that's enough. You know, you just get enough bench scoring where mm. I like their bench. You know, Derek Rose, on a given night, he can score 25 off the bench. You know, not every night, oh, yeah. but he can get hot. He can still get really hot and be productive. So who knows with the Knicks? Uh, mm. But it's good. It's nice to see them be relevant for a, because they haven't been oh, yeah. forever. And, you know, it's – Meant Zion said the other day after the game, he loves playing in New York. Well, who loved playing in New York more than Michael Jordan? I mean, it's mm. good to see this team be competitive at least and be back, you know, with the Celtics, with the Knicks playing well. It's 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 always good. 76ers, uh, you know, those were the teams of the 80s and 90s mm. having good battles. Maybe we'll see that um, down the line, even with James yeah. Dolan running things. Yeah, I love the fact that you see these teams like, the, the Suns, who haven't been great in a long time, the Knicks, who have been a doormat, like you said, for what feels like 30 years. Um, I'm, I'm blank. Oh, Atlanta, who hasn't been good yeah. in a little while. Like, now that they're kind of coming alive and these these other teams that have been just okay, subpar, maybe make the playoffs, they're kind of dying away a little bit. And, you know, we get to see some new life and some new faces. So I love it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, if the Bulls could turn it around, then it'd be like, the old days again but the oh, bulls are sure. better so we'll see what happens there we'll wrap up the pod by picking our mvp and this this is a tough one because there's been so many injuries mm-hmm. and guys have missed a lot of times so you got like lebron who's probably out of it kevin durant was never involved harden was playing great but now he's injured yeah um who do you have as your mvp right now in the league uh I would say before he got injured, I, I would have said Harden. Actually, he would have been he would have been my choice. It just had a phenomenal year in all in all aspects of the game. He's even not been played like I've watched him a couple times. He's not even played bad defensively, which is you know the the team itself is not a great defensive team. But yeah, twenty five points, eight uh, rebounds, and eleven assists. I, I think that gets you an MVP nod at least every time you do that. So yeah, I, you said that's your pick as well. Yeah, if he if he didn't get help, if he didn't get hurt, he would have been my pick. Okay, so who's so who's your who's your guy? See, Jokic will probably win the award because he's played every game. He had a great game, he dropped forty nine last night, almost a triple double, mm. double overtime win over Memphis. Um, but he, he's missed time, but when he's playing, he's dominant. I'm gonna give it to Joel uh, MB okay. because when he's on the floor, I just think he's. This year, for a lot of the year, you could say he's the best player in the NBA. Obviously, Kevin Durant's been hurt, LeBron and Davis, what have you. But he's right there. I, I think he's – we mentioned Julius Randle buying into nutrition and just committing to the game. I think Embiid has done that as well. And his right. three-point shot, his defense, his uh, leadership, I think it's there in the 76ers just have a different aura to this team than they have in previous seasons. Yeah, they just feel dominant, and obviously holding that number one spot all year is that's just it's just done it for them. And but I feel like yeah, they're playing with confidence. They're playing the right way. They're deep, and you're right. When Embiid playing, he's an MVP caliber player. It's going to be interesting to see who gets it. I, I think Jokic, like you said, I think he's going to get a nod this year, which is very, very deserving. I think he's had that type type of year, especially now. Watch watch that Murray's out. Watch, I think, that he elevates his game. It's kind of like a Crosby Melkin scenario where he knows he's got to pick it up for his team at least to get to the playoffs. And then, you know, we'll see after that. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll see. But uh, yeah, I agree. Embiid, he was our, I think he was our number one pick when we did uh, an, our last NBA podcast. Yeah. Yes. So that just shows you the longevity of how long he's been such a great player for. No, um, I agreed. Yeah, he was both of our picks because he was just he missed some time. But when he's on the floor, he rarely has a bad game. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was fun. Go through the whole, yeah. and we I don't think we missed it. We missed some bottom feeders, but they're not worth our time. You know, Sacramento, we couldn't fit you in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, Anthony Edwards. You never got a yeah. never got a mention on this one. Anthony Edwards uh, didn't know who A Rod was, and A Rod <laughs> bought the team, which I thought was really funny. Yeah, um, it is actually kind of fun. Uh, credit to Anthony Edwards because A Rod sucks. Um, I didn't say that. 
But um, yeah, what Shay, what do you got on the go the rest of the week? Uh, not a lot shaking. My good friend uh, Brandon Cormier is down to in, in my part of the town, so I'm probably gonna have a a say or a drink or two with him, and you know, see what he's up to. But other than that, gotta you know cheer on my Leafs because clearly they need me because they suck now. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, everyone, uh, that's a that's a typical Leafs answer from you know a couple years ago. But now we're more confident, and mature. Um, but no, I just wanted to shout out my grandfather. It's uh. Uh, it's his 70th birthday today, so happy birthday, pup. I love you. You're an influential man in my, in my life, and uh, I hope you have the best today today, and I uh, hope to talk to you soon. Yeah, no, uh, happy birthday, Alan, 70 years old. Uh, just hoping to get to 23. That's the goal this year. Uh, <laughs> I want to get to, to the Blink-182 uh, territory and then go through that tough year and then come out the other side like you have recently. So, um, yeah, I got for me, just got the interview, and then – Actually, it's an exciting Saturday night. It's um, UFC 261. Uh, Masvidal will be fighting Usman in a rematch, but it's um, a full crowd for the first time in over a calendar year in Jacksonville. Yeah, that. So that should be interesting to see uh, how they do that, if there's masks and whatnot. But, um, you know, live crowd at UFC events. So that, that I think they'll be horny to get in there and get going. Yeah, I think for – for that sport in particular, you think about how they feed off that energy and the crowd booing them or cheering them on. Right. Uh, I just, I, I think it's going to be amazing. And I don't watch a ton of UFC, but I think I'm going to buy the pay-per-view for that night just to, just to get a, a, a normal, a normal viewing of a sporting event, I guess. I didn't watch the Texas when they allowed everyone in there. Cause I, yeah, but anyways, but yeah, no, but to, to see that in, in a fold and to watch those matches is something I think I'm going to take part of as well. So no, it's exciting. Anything else uh, other than, the big uh the big big podcast coming up um yeah just some regular you know uh housekeeping stuff different podcasts um work um it's gonna rain so i'm not gonna really be able to get outside much probably like you yeah. said watch watch uh watch your lease uh, david riddick getting the start tonight not jack campbell mm -hmm. so and uh i think your boy william nylander missed curfew but they're still gonna play him tonight so he yeah yeah yeah, that's a great yeah way to say way to say to your word there, Chief Keith. Yeah, I would have much rather him miss the game, even as a fan of him. But like, yeah, we don't. That's that's another story we can get into. But Chief yeah. Keith, lay, lay your yeah, lay your shield down and don't let don't let him play if you're going to say that. Agreed. Um, so in regards to next week, we're going to keep you guys all on your toes. I have a few ideas I'm going to pitch to Seamus after the podcast, but. We'll be talking about a show next week. Don't worry about that. We'll be back on it next week. Um, we're not going to be talking about Succession because we're not going to let HBO beat us. Uh, I let <laughs> HBO beat me watching Game of Thrones. I'm not letting that happen again. Um, so we'll, we'll be back next week with a new show. But for Seamus and myself, hope you guys are all doing well. Enjoy the nice weather while you can. And we'll talk to you guys real soon. Take care.